Dan Cochimilio here for NorCal Sports Network, and we're going to talk about Steph Curry's latest injury to his left ankle. This show is brought to you by Chapman Law Group. Chapman Law Group, located in Marin. Check out the description in the chat here, and you'll be able to see all about Chapman Law Group in the show's description. All right, let's get right to it. Steph Curry on Sunday night's game against the Los Angeles Clippers twisted his ankle at one point and then went to the bench, worked it out with a band, and he was pulling his foot and trying to get the ankle loose and then came back in later on in the game and immediately within the first 30 seconds of re-entering the game was setting a screen and put his left foot out and it just gave way and he limped off and he knew he was, it was not just a normal sprain that was going to be something he could come back fine later in the game. This was set him aside and he's been ruled out for the next two games against the Pelicans Tuesday and Wednesday night. But I think it's going to be a lot longer than that, guys. I really do. He's been diagnosed with what's called a left perineal strain and says he'll be reevaluated on Friday and could miss up to two weeks. I I think the, the full two weeks is definitely – not just a possibility, but a probability. If you look at what the diagnosis, when I looked up a left perineal strain, this is what it says on Google here, okay? Its causes is perineal tendon injuries can be caused by overuse. Okay, we all know what it was an ankle sprain. Uh Treatment, minor perineal strains can heal without surgery, with rest, immobilization, exercise, and other self-care measures. Treatments may include icing heat or ultrasound therapy to reduce pain and swelling, compression and elevation to reduce inflammation, and then wearing a brace for a short while or during activities that require repetitive ankle motion. The one thing that Steph may have going for him is he does wear a uh, on both ankles from his problems coming up in the league early on he wears kind of a i don't i'm not sure what the technical term is but he wears kind of a special ankle braces to protect his ankles but uh, a perineal strain can take several weeks for a strained perineal tendon to heal depending on the severity of the injury so We'll see how this goes, but my guess is that Steph maybe doesn't even make the upcoming road trip after these two games at home, Tuesday and Wednesday night against the Pelicans. Let's just take a look at the Warriors' schedule. We've got the Pelicans on tap Tuesday and Wednesday night, and then they go to – Let's see, to Houston. They start a five-game road trip on November 2nd. So that would be what, uh, Friday? Friday is the second, if I believe. Yes. So Friday, November 2nd, or is that, no, Saturday, excuse me, Saturday, November 2nd. Saturday is the second, and then they go to Washington, and then the Celtics, Cleveland, and end the five-game road trip at Oklahoma City on November 10th. My guess is that Steph doesn't play again until maybe November 12th when the Warriors come back to face Clay Thompson and the Dallas Mavericks at the Chase Center in San Francisco. So this is going to be a rough stretch. For the Warriors, not only is Steph going to miss the next two games, but so is DeAnthony Melton, the other possible point guard who could have taken over Steph's role. 
Melton's out with some lower back issues, lower back strain. Remember, he missed a lot of time last year with a back injury. So that's not a good sign that Melton's back is already acting up. And then it's possible that Andrew Wiggins is not available against the Pelicans on Tuesday night. He's dealing with a strained lower back as well. And Wiggins is looking really good so far in the young three-game season with the Warriors being two and one. But there's your schedule looking at it. It's very possible that Steph misses three weeks and doesn't come back for any of the games that we're looking at, including all the way up to November 18th with the Los Angeles Clippers. So this is not uh, a thing that you want to take lightly if you're the Golden State Warriors. You definitely don't want to be putting Steph out there too soon and have him further risk something more serious. So the Warriors are going to play this, you know, straight, make sure that Steph gets to be 100% before they put him back out there. Also, you know, the Warriors talk about their depth. This is going to challenge their depth with Curry and Melton out and possibly Wiggins. That takes your 12-men rotation down to nine, and it could allow for Lindsey Waters to move up into the rotation as – you know, if you're down to nine and you've lost three of your guys, maybe Melton step or um, not Melton, but uh, Water steps in and becomes that tenth player. If indeed that uh, Wiggins is not able to go as well. On the other front, the Warriors have looked pretty good the first two games of the season. Had a rough night on Sunday night against the Clippers. Buddy Heald, who was shooting the lights out the first two games, was 12 of 16 from three-point range, was one of nine um, last night on Sunday. And uh, that was a, a tough thing to see, but that's going to happen. You know, the law of averages, come back; they always come back to earth, right? So Buddy Heald was, at the time, he was, again, 12 of 16, an incredible 75%, but he's now 13 for 25, and he's at 52%. So he's still got room to come down to the law of averages. He'll probably come down another 8 to 12%, somewhere in that range, and shoot anywhere between 40 and 44% from three. So that would be my guess. Hopefully, Buddy Hill's closer to the 43, 44% mark from three, but it's going to happen. Guys, that's just the way it works in basketball. So we see that the Warriors now will have to adjust and who's going to be the main ball carriers now? It's probably going to be Pods or Draymond Green or Kyle Anderson is my guess. I'm guessing those three guys will be the guys that handle bringing up the ball and running the offense. And I kind of like to see, uh, I like seeing Kyle Anderson bring the ball up the court and the offense going through Anderson. But this is going to have an impact on the Warriors for sure. They're two and one. It looked like their first five games were all winnable and that they would go at least 4-1, and one, which they still can do. They can still beat the Pelicans. They're without DeAndre, DeAndre uh, Murray, DeAndre Murray uh, Deontay Murray. He's out with a broken hand. I don't know when he'll be back, but definitely not for Tuesday and Wednesday night here. It's probably going to be another six, eight weeks or more. So Murray's out, but it's still going to be tough. They've got Brandon Ingram. They got Zion Williamson. They've got some, they still got some playmakers. New Orleans is not going to be easy, although they did lose to Portland, which, you know, is uh, Portland's not going to win too many games. But, you know, it's the NBA. Teams are going to win 
you know, the worst teams in the NBA are, are going to win 15 games, right? The very worst. So, I mean, unless you're – what year was that? The Philadelphia 76ers set an all-time record for futility. I think they won nine games. I think they went nine and 73, the Philadelphia 76ers. I think it was early, sometime in the 70s or something like that, nine and 73. And the Golden State Warriors, on the other hand, owned the record for the most wins, 73 and nine, but fell one game short, as we know, to LeBron and the Cavs back in the 2015 2016 season. So I don't think that record will ever be broken 73 wins. I really don't. The Celtics are going to be very tough this year, and they look like the class of the NBA. But I don't see them being a team to to come up to that 73 mark. I don't think anybody will ever beat that 73 win mark ever again. Teams are there's just too much talent across the NBA now, and everybody's getting better and better. And you know, the Warriors years ago, you remember Joe Lake of saying they were light years ahead of everybody, and they were. When they had KD, that no, no one was going to touch him. KD doesn't go down against Toronto with the Achilles. They're winning that series, and they win three back-to-back-to-back, uh, to back to back, a three-peat. That was a, a given. But the league has caught up and surpassed the Warriors, obviously. And there's just too many good teams now for anyone to win 73 games, probably let alone 70. I don't even know if anybody will be able to touch 70 going forward. There's just too many good teams, good players now. But wrapping up, guys, Steph Curry with the perineal strain, the left perineal strain. Look for Curry to probably miss two to three weeks. They're saying two games and then they'll reevaluate, but. As I saw him walk off, I don't think there's any way that he plays on the first couple games of the upcoming five-game road trip, let alone any of the five. If I'm the Warriors, it's too early. I'm waiting for Steph to be 100%. And if we look at that schedule again, after the two games against the Pelicans, it's the Rockets, Wizards, Celtics, Cavs, Thunder. Five-game trip. I thought with Steph, they could maybe win two. I was thinking they could get two, maybe even three. I think they could get the Wizards with Steph. And anybody else they're playing against other than the Celtics, I think they would be able to, to beat possibly either the Rockets, the Cavs, or the Thunder with Steph. Now, without Steph, all five games are up in the air because you might not even have Melton. So this is a rough go, but I, I'm thinking they can get past the Rock or not the Rockets, but the Wizards. And if they can somehow pull one other game from the trip and go two and three. They're two and one now. Then they've got the Pelicans for two. If they can split there and go three and two and somehow go two and three on the five game road trip and come back as a, what would that put them at? Uh, what did I say? They would be three and two and then go to be five and five. If they could come back from the road trip at five and five and then get hopefully get Steph back around the 12th of November, then uh, all is well. But if the Warriors end up having too many guys go down and they come and they start off three and seven, that could be a tough situation for the Warriors. So. I think if you can root for a five and five start after 10 games, then you're looking pretty good with the Golden State Warriors. But once again, Steph Curry going to miss the two games against the New Orleans Pelicans 
and most likely going to miss all five games on the upcoming Eastern Swing road trip. And it would not surprise me if Steph stays home and recuperates and gets in the uh, gets in his therapy working with uh, the Warriors trainer Rick Celebrini and getting him all the care he needs to get back to 100%. So guys, we want to thank you for joining this uh, and watching this video. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button as uh, we put a lot of videos out. We're live many times, several nights a week, almost every night of the week, seven days a week, NorCal Sports Network is covering something live. So if you would, hit that like and subscribe button. Would really appreciate that. Help the channel grow. It gets it all out. Uh, when more people like the videos, it gets put out more by YouTube and the algorithms. I don't know how they work at all, but for some reason, when it starts growing more and more, they kick it out to more people. So hit that like and subscribe button. Subscribe again to NorCal Sports Network. We'll be here for all 82 Golden State Warriors postgame shows right here on NorCal Sports Network. Take care. Thanks for watching.